the cash flow guidance is a decline in 2020 versus 2019. Um, looking through the report and trying to find an explanation for this, can you elaborate a little bit on why that cash flow guidance has declined? Thank you very much. Good morning. Uh, yes, we have an excellent 17% growth in 2019 and now 2020 we are guiding slightly below. We have said uh, quite a long time that uh, we have been without paying taxes in several countries for, for, for having loss carry forwards that we have used and, and they are now expiring so that is a very sensible course and then also we have done a, a tremendous work on working capital. We have taken out over six billion in this company now um, over the last uh, four years and, and that is going to be still a journey where we will be able to create more working capital efficiency but at the lower level going forward. That's two main reasons going forward. Uh, good morning to you. It's good to see you. It's Manas in, in Dubai, Christian. Um, one of the criticisms leveled against the business last year was that you were a bit slow on terms of cost cuts in the domestic unit. Can you update the market in terms of where you are with your cost cutting program? Well, I, I, I can understand the worry, but we were very clear in the beginning of the year that will be a journey we take during the year and we will step up in the second half, which is also meaning that we have that momentum going into 2020. We promised a decline in, in, in the net cost, in net OPEX of 2% on the group and 3% in Sweden. We came out 4% in Sweden and 2% and on group. And uh, as I said, it comes from a momentum that we now bring into to the next year. It's, uh, it's resources, it's supplier, but it's primarily around efficiency. We have put six countries together when it comes to IT and network organizations. And instead of having six teams in six countries doing updates on SMS products or something, we have one team doing it for everyone. So that's a typical simple example of how we can bring efficiency. Also moved some of our resources consultants and internal to Lithuania, not to an external part, to our own business, but we do it in a lower cost country than, than in the Nordics. Christian, um, how aggressively will capital spending in 2020 focus on 5G or is it more a story for 2021? Well, we started in 2019 slowly and we, we continue to see uh, a need to, uh, to invest in 5G. In, four, in Finland, for example, we have 5G offerings out now, but we are not going to push it. and We are not going to be trying to, to take a, a position where, where that will, will um, eat into our capex too fast because the consumer market is still not in need of 5G, but on the other hand, the B2B business is, is requiring it more and more. And we have good examples of, of um, good customer experience last year, where we have installed the uh, network and solutions for them uh, in a combination with IoT and 5G. But it's, it's not hopefully gonna be a, a fast growing uh, CapEx in Telia. What about the deal, uh, Bonnier? A uh, billion dollars, supposed to be the transformation to end all transformations in content. What the market wants to know is, can you make 600 million Swedish krona in synergies, or do you think that you can eke out more than that? I don't want to promise more than that. I want to promise that we're going to take this, this uh, wonderful piece of diamond and uh, make sure it's available even for more Swedish and uh, Finnish uh, and, and maybe in the future also Nordic viewers. Um, it's it's important to remember that the, the landscape, the end-to-end the -end value chain of TV media is changing and we are just in the beginning of the journey we have talked about so long. We have a uh, large uh, external uh, from Sweden and Finland companies coming in like Netflix and Disney and others and local content is going to be important but it's important that everyone can see it. Uh, it's free for everyone and, and we will fight for that and we will, we will also drive that journey and make it uh, something very nice uh, for our viewers and I think that will contribute a lot. Now also been from day one we have suddenly a customer operations um, um, department which is huge. We have uh, a lot of shops and we have our own digital channels where we can start to, to filter this out and, and make good um, good converged um, offers to our customers and, and uh, without compromising on price, but trying to, 
to actually bring more service and value, and that's exactly what we're doing. It will take some time, but, but it's a journey we know is important for us to adapt to because the value yeah. chain is changing and the c consumers want to view TV in a different way in the future. Christian, what are your thoughts on the UK allowing Huawei into parts of its 5G network? I don't have a specific comment on UK. Uh, we, we like many suppliers in the network side. Um, we uh, use Huawei today in certain parts of our network and uh, they are an important partner in, in for example, Norway the next four years. Um, we follow the regulation uh, properly and, and we follow and try to also participate in, in the evolution. I actually hope we have five uh, suppliers in five years time instead of three today and that's what I'm trying to, to work for and, and maybe companies like who knows Samsung's or others comes up and, and uh, start to take the fight.